Softwares are not that scary and difficult, but I remember the confusion when you don't know where what's going on in the industry and when every second word is new to you. Let's talk about production softwares and decide which one you should learn. Same as with everything else, you have to choose the ones that you're most comfortable to work with. You also need to know what you're going to do and what are your goals in the industry. This is really important. To make life easier, let's categorize the production softwares that are used in big production pipelines. Every production pipeline consists of several softwares. It can't be just one, and you will understand why in a moment. I will only consider softwares that are uh, used in graphics production and are the most used and popular ones. There are other 3D programs out there, but they're mostly for engineering, product design, and things like that. As this channel is mostly about VFX, I will only consider the most related softwares. So, every 3D artist has his main software of choice. And I will start with my favorite, Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D, in my opinion, is the most user-friendly software out there. It's very intuitive and therefore the easiest to learn. It's most appealing to motion designers and the reason for that is its uh, MoGraph system and what you can do with it. It is also very capable in VFX, you can sculpt, rig your uh, characters, but I would say systems for that in Cinema 4D are not the best ones. Cinema 4D is what I use for everything, but this is mostly due to the fact that I'm doing a lot of hard surface modeling and rigging when it comes to VFX and a lot of product commercials. If I would do character design and rigging, Cinema 4D wouldn't be my first choice. And that's where Maya would be a better option. Cinema 4D is also quite expensive. They do offer different versions, but I think the Studio One is the only one worth having. And its price is £2,800, excluding taxes. All the prices in this video will be excluding taxes, by the way. They do offer 42 days trial and student licenses, but I still don't get why Maxon won't introduce a subscription-based license. But what do I know? The second main software in my list is Maya. In my How to Learn VFX video, I described Maya as Maya, oh Maya. And I mean it, it's quite a complex tool to learn, but it's by far the most powerful one. Maya can do anything. It's very flexible and easily extendable to your needs. Thousands of plugins, scripts, and other custom-made things available for it. For those of you who in comments said that uh, some other softwares can replace Maya in big production pipelines, I will explain why they can't. Maya is and will be an industry standard for a while, just because it's oriented to a huge production pipelines. How exactly? Simple example, let's say you created a character, your rigging artist rigged it and your animator made a sequence with it. And then suddenly your director says that he wants to amend the model. What would you do? Redo all the steps? No, because Maya allows you to build your workflow that way that your initial model, initial source file, serves as an instance on further production steps. And if you need to amend anything in your model, you only amend the initial source file. And instances and rigging and animation gets updated automatically. There are a lot of examples like that in Maya. Tons of features in Maya are oriented to a bigger production houses. And that's why you should learn Maya if you're planning to work in a big studio in future. All Autodesk uh, softwares are subscription based and prices are starting from 216 pounds a month. They also have standard 30 day trial or three years uh, student license, which is great. Autodesk have a few other big uh, softwares and one of them is 3ds Max. It is one of the most popular softwares for architecture, exterior, interior, hard surface modeling and some game development. I started with 3ds Max, but I personally think its interface and its code is so outdated. That's pretty much all I can say about 3ds Max. Pricing for it is the same as for Maya. Another very popular 3D software is Blender. And it's very appealing to many because it's free. 
yet very capable software that can produce imagery on the same level as two previously mentioned ones. I won't lie, I, I haven't worked in Blender at all, but I heard game developers love it, so if you're into game development, you might want to research the question. Next, very important 3D software is ZBrush. ZBrush is the software with the interface from another world, but you will quickly get used to it if you want to do character design. ZBrush is by far the best software when it comes to sculpting. It allows you to model, sculpt, optimize, bake, and export your models for further production. All highly detailed models has to be sculpted first, usually in ZBrush. If you're seriously into character design, this will be your main weapon. The price for this tool is 900 pounds and they have educational licenses available too. Apart from main 3D software, there are other choices to make on top of this. This is something you will get deeper into after a while of using your software of choice. Render engines, plugins, scripts. There are a few important secondary softwares though. Tools for texturing, painting, simulations, and things like that. Houdini FX, for example. The reason I'm putting this software as a secondary software is that it's really hard to model something in Houdini. But it's unbeatable when it comes to simulations, realistic effects, particles, liquids, smokes, volumes, destructions, all that stuff. For example, you would model a house in Cinema 4D or Maya and then dramatically destroy it in Houdini. Houdini is a fully node-based software in the most hardcore meaning of that word. It's pretty tough to learn. This is undoubtedly the industry standard for these kind of effects. Nowadays it's used almost in every Hollywood movie and this is the reason why it costs so much. Prices go all the way up to whopping 7,000 pounds for a commercial license. But Houdini offers a free apprentice license and this is really cool because these guys are encouraging people to learn Houdini. I love that. Next two very important secondary softwares you have to consider to learn are Substance Painter and Substance Designer. Substance Designer and Substance Painter obtained the love of thousands of artists in the recent years and I'm one of them. Previously I was using a software called Mari for that kind of stuff, but the logarithmic changed everything. In a nutshell, Substance Designer allows you to create fully procedural, high-res stylable materials and then export them as a set of textures. And Substance Painter allows you to paint these materials on your models. I think these two softwares are so amazing that they deserve a special dedicated video about how awesome they are. If you want to step up your texture game, you should definitely consider having these in your arsenal. A logarithmic offer different type of licenses with pricing starting from as little as 20 pounds a month and they have one year learning license available as well. Further down the line, creating 3D scene is not enough. To achieve truly photorealistic results, you need to compose your scene and post-produce it properly. Combine outputs from main 3D software and Houdini, for instance. Compositing softwares are also used to combine live shots with CG elements. So technically, VFX is not possible without compositing software. There are three most popular ones. After Effects is the most used software among you guys and in general it is related with VFX and stuff because of its name, I guess. But it's not exactly the case. After Effects is a layer-based composer that allows you to create really cool things and is very good for motion graphics, UI design, 2D animations, and you can compose relatively simple scenes in it. But it's really challenging to compose something decent in it because you will get lost in layers and pre-comps. It is also not a 3D composer, it's a so-called 2.5D software which automatically makes it not friendly to VFX. All Adobe softwares are subscription based so if you're interested look up the prices it's really affordable. I'm not saying After Effects is not used in big production it is in fact used a lot but not for actual compositing. There are no tools comparable to After Effects when it comes to UI 
animations, holograms, and assets like that. Nuke is the industry standard in compositing. It is a very powerful node-based compositing software used in all production houses. It's fully 3D, so you can create amazing things in it. It will allow you to work with green screens on a highest level, integrate CG elements, paint out unwanted items from your shots, and basically create Hollywood level imagery if you know how to use it properly. The reason node-based workflow is so important in big production is that it allows you to come back to any stage of production and make necessary amends with almost no effort. In a layer-based software like After Effects, it would be really challenging. Nodes are also designed to handle much more complex scenes. As Nuke is industry standard, it's quite pricey, starting with 3,400 and finishing with 7,600 pounds per license. But they offer educational licenses too, which is good. And that's when Blackmagic's Fusion comes into consideration. Fusion is my choice. It might not be as advanced as Nuke in some little questions, but differences are insignificant and Fusion is free. If you want some advanced uh, functionality like using OFX plugins or using network rendering, then you can pay 300 pounds for studio version. And that's it, you're equipped with a really powerful node-based compositing software. My tutorials are featuring Fusion quite often. If you're into video production, you need a video editing software to edit your VFX shots into a nice timeline add music, color grade, and export it as an actual video file. When it comes to color grading, there is nothing comparable to Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve. I would call it a semi-node-based uh, software. Apart from color grading, you can edit sound design. They now offer Fusion integrated into DaVinci, so you can do uh, some compositing in it as well. And all that in one software. DaVinci is used in the biggest color grading houses. And initially it was purely grading software. It handles colors unlike anything else. The best part about DaVinci is that the pricing is the same as for Fusion. It's free or 300 pounds for studio version. If you're a Mac user, you're probably already using Final Cut Pro. The reason Final Cut Pro and Macs are so connected is that Final Cut is highly optimized for Mac machines. It's blazing fast and stable. It usually comes with your Mac or you can buy it for 50 pounds. I'm editing most of my videos in Adobe Premiere. Premiere is very flexible and customizable, something that DaVinci is missing. I can customize the layout as I want and optimize it for any project. And it's also super fast for editing. I can do most color grading tasks in it and it has direct link with After Effects and Audition. The pricing is same subscription based as for all others Adobe software. So I use DaVinci for color grading commercials when it's needed and Adobe Premiere for everything else. To summarize, this is what I would call the base that you need to clarify for yourself. Who are you? What are you doing? Where are you going in the industry? Do you want to be a freelancer or do you want to work in a big studio? These are the questions you should be asking yourself instead of trying to find out which software is better. Think strategically. If I would want to work in a big studio, I would learn Maya and Nuke with no hesitation. If I would want to be a solo artist and do a freelance or contract to work, I would choose something else. I personally use Cinema 4D as my main software. I use Substance Painter, Substance Designer, Houdini FX, and I use Fusion as my compositing software. I use DaVinci for color grading and Adobe Premiere for all my video editing. Apart from these main tools, you will need Photoshop of course. Apart from Photoshop, there are tools that are dedicated to particular tasks. For example, tracking can be done in most of 3D softwares and compositing softwares, but there are dedicated softwares that are better at it. Synthize, PF Track, 
Bojo, they are all better than integrated tracking systems. And depending on the task, you will find out which tools are available to use. Rotoscopy, for instance, can be done in a variety of ways. You can manually mask it out in your compositing software. After Effects have a roto brush which does a brilliant job in simple tasks. Silhouette Effects or Mocha would be my uh, choice if it comes to serious rotoscopy. You will have to choose your additional tools as you go and it will be influenced by a lot of factors. Almost all existing softwares are developed to a highest level. I know it sounds almost the same way I talked about render engines, but it's true. I love the time we live in because we're left with creative choices rather than technical. All of the softwares I mentioned in this video are capable of producing Hollywood level imagery and all of them are in fact used in Hollywood, but it depends on the pipeline, depends on the task, depends on the goal, depends on every individual's preferences. I hope this video will make your choice easier because I received some really funny questions. Now you know the categories of softwares and you can build a strategy of what and why you will learn. Thumbs up if that was helpful. Share this video if you know anyone who might need it. Subscribe if CG and VFX is something you are into. And thanks for watching guys. Peace.